Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you, thank you for subscribing. Yeah! Alright. Um, we're going to get back on this uh, series that I was doing with a busted up Mercury, a dead Yamaha, and a busted up 30 Johnson. So, uh, yeah, she took a whack, and so we got to pull it to bits, you understand? And see if we can't get it straightened out with a new lower cowl pan and whatever else we find that's busted in there. So, let's get to it. Okay, so I went in the bone pile, and I found the correct pan. Um... for a 30 Johnson. Well, 30 OMC. This one was an Evinrude, I believe. Um, but, I'm going to have to get it off, wash it, wire wheel it, do a little sanding and get it painted. A better color to match. The Broken did one. Probably take the rubber with it, but first I gotta get this thing off. The crawlies. I guess I'll put a little purple power first. Now, I've had a couple people, subs, ask me, do you prefer the purple power over like mean green or? Castrol super clean. Um, and the answer to that question is yes. And the reason why is because I found it, at least here locally, for me, the Purple Power does a really good job. I would say as good as, as those um, that I mentioned. And it's half the price. So that's why I use it. it. It does a good job, and it literally is half the price of uh, like Castrol Super Clean and and so forth like that. So that's the main that's the main selling point for me is it seems to do just an adequate job and for half the price. So that's why I use it. Um, you know, if I see some of the other stuff on sale, there's another one I like called Orange Zip. Zip Zip. It's not bad. You know, that grease there, I gotta get that off. Put a rag or something, some gas. This is just a preliminary rinse off that I'm doing here. Creepy crawling.
If you can read it there, it says metallic charcoal. If you look right there on the very front of the lower unit, um, I squirted some there just to give it a test. You can see it's real shiny. So just right at the very tip end of the, uh, of the uh, front of the lower unit there. So it matches very closely. I've used it before. Um, on these Johnson 99 models. It uh, covers well, shines good, and then uh, I put two coats of primer, two coats of the uh, charcoal metallic, and then once that sets up a little bit and gets tacky, I'll hit it with a coat of uh, regular old rattle can uh, clear acrylic make it shiny and pieties ooh she looking pieties Dad gum thieving parts monkey always trying to get my parts. Now I've taken off this upriser that goes up to the bell crank here. You have to take out a little piece of wire that's a little S-shaped wire goes through right there, and you gotta undo the spring that holds the whole thing. Then I undid the throttle cable and all and uh, so when that goes back on it goes back on in that direction this this little loop goes like so so um, 
I'm going to continue on at this tool here. Hopefully you can see it. There's a couple pictures of it. That's called Special Tool 322700. And the manual tells you you need that tool to take off those two center nuts. And I will show you those and how the tool works. And you do not need to buy 322700. You can easily make fab that tool. All right. So right down in there is the nuts they're talking about. There's one on each side. You do have to take the bell crank riser and everything off to get at this, this one. There's another one on the other side in the same way. Here's the special tool they're talking about. Now you can tell that's just one I threw together with my welder and a long skinny bolt and a half inch boxed in wrench, closed in wrench. And if you just reach down in there, that's how the tool works. Make sure you're in there, yeah. And that's basically all it is. And then you just take them out. So you don't need to go buy that special tool. I will show you this one again as soon as I get this finger loose. All right, so that's what it is. You can pause this and look at it if you want. But you do need to have this. I mean, you know, you need to either make it or buy it. Um, so there you go. Once you get them loose, you can generally just spin them off Oop, like that. Okay, so on that power head over there, which is ready to come out now, um, you know, what you're going to do, uh, if you got some salty studs and stuff like I did, you, you know, you're going to take your different prying tools. Different prying tools, get in there in different angles and so forth. And then I've got several screwdrivers like this that just have, you know, pretty good sharp tips that can get in there. And then you see this drill bit here? It's one of these step bits. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because I didn't care about this cowling, because um, it's coming off, you can see, I drilled a hole here. I drilled one back here, actually two. That allowed me to get in there with my screwdrivers and stuff. Um, and what the main problem with this guy being so tight, see that, Ugh, excuse me, one stud right here. Solid white from salt, so it was stuck. So I heated that with a torch, that stud there. I heated it with a torch on both sides, but it was only really this one that was stuck. So, that power head should come on out. Um, so there's the power head, but when I unbolted the pan, um, two of the nuts broke off. So I'm heating them with the torch. And get the old visor grips. My advisor grips. We'll uh, turn it out of there. She's pretty hot. Now she ain't moving, so I'm probably gonna have to drill some hole. Oh, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't tell. Well, because I don't feel like drilling stainless, I think what I'm gonna do is drill me a hole down each side of that thing, mid section and. Lower, and there swings the decapitation. He has been decapitated off with his head. So what I did, and what I'm doing, use it right down alongside 
that bolt, stud, whatever heck you want to call it. I drill it a hole. All the way through. Give me a little tap juice on there. Those holes go all the way through. I'm heating that one now. I already got this one. Loose. Back and forth, back and forth. See all that white yuck coming out of there? Step on that. That's fine. Hopefully, this one will do the same way. Well, I can get that tighter. This be spur on. Back and forth. That's all the torching it needs. So. Back and forth, back and forth. I think we got Turbo Joe. Now, those two little lube holes I drilled on either side are not going to hurt nothing. Um, you still got lots of thread area in there to get. So when I put the new pan on, I'll got, you can see my little holes go right down alongside the uh, bolt. And that's what you want to do, cut a channel on each side of the bolt threads. Put the lube in there, get the heat. And good set of needle nose vice grips is what I like. And get to rocking and rocking and rocking and rolling. And they come out. And you can do that all over aluminum. I've seen people pop stuff off. And, uh, well, I've seen me pop stuff off. Um, and then I started doing this. And it, it, it works. It saves you some headache. It little never sees. Ever sees, empty sees, whatever you call it, sees. There's one and two. Okay. Three. 
and four. Of the pan bolts. A little. Never sees them on now. So if we ever have to do this again, he wouldn't drop that motor twice now, would he? Oh, oh, what'd you say? What did you say? You never know. You just never know. Ah! There go the antecedents. Little crisp crossums, apple sauces. There's that, and might as well, since I got it off, paint them, paint them up too. Make them look all per 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 per. -er. Paint them up, make them look pretty. Yeah, and make them look pretty. Alright, we got the gasket already in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the uh the thing. The hood latch chiz. I put on the hood latches. I write that on. I Oh, I hit the wrong, ah. Huh? Ah. What? What? Uh. Need some geese. Okay, put the little geese in there, in the hole, in the Put the geese, put the geese, put the head of geese. There, it's all geesey. So then you gotta figure out how it all goes back together. <coughs> we figure it out. So I think the flexi compressionist washer goes on and then you see it's got a square it's kind of it's a not a square it's a uh uh, uh gone -gon -gon. it's that shape so if this was in that position this this would be locked in Uh oh.
buddy. I'm doing well. What can I do for you? Oh, I would well, you say you might have some parts for me, but uh, oh, I might want to talk to my buddy Chuck here. He's Okay, on these two forward nuts, I take a knife about like that that has the serrated blade and a long screwdriver. And then I take a big old blob of anises. Okay, and then what I do is I use the screwdriver to put pressure on the top of the nut and then I use the serrated blade to get it started. That's just how I try and do it. It seems to work pretty good most of the time. So, um, we're gonna... We did the Mercury 40. We did the Yamaha 40. Now we're gonna get on this 30 Johnson. Breaks my heart. Busted it all to pieces. We gonna get it back together. We fix it. Bet we will. So Stay tuned for part four on Inside Outboards with Cody Bass. More to come.